when you go for weddings, when you go for burials and all the things that bring family members together, there's one of the lectures we're going to do. I will show you things to look out for. Because most times we go there, we don't know where to look. If you see any of these signs, know that you're at war. Stop eating, stop drinking, start praying. This matter is a big matter, this matter. Please ask your neighbor again, have you really seen your family from the realm of the spirit? Have you, have you seen them? In a polygamous setting, the daughter of the younger wife is to be given out in marriage. And the older wife has three children, female children, much older than the one that is marrying. And nobody even came to say, how are you? How you be? <laughs> No sign. So on the traditional way, they were dancing. Buru, 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 buru. She had gone to visit an altar. And they gave her a liquid. Just rub it on the stomach. Buru, buru. All those dances, you people dance, and your, your spirit sleeps. And the woman was able to go there. She, she took money to spray. Buru, 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 para, buru, 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 para, buru, 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 para, buru. Nobody saw her except the cameraman. It was a strange sight. He's been covering many, many occasions. So what the cameraman did was that he caught that part and put it online. So when the family people say, ah, mm, I don't want to go into the, but that day, salvation came through the, the camera man. Because when the, the video, the video, ah, it, spread, it went viral, not to you in the family within the family. And it generated a civil war. But at the end of the day, they compelled the woman to reverse. You know, there was no spiritual person there, so they had to use demonic reversal methods. And you know the implication of a demonic reversal method <laughs> is that there are demonic deposits left, left behind. The only cure to darkness is light. <laughs> if you don't find the cure in light, that thing they are doing in darkness is called complication. I don't know if that lady has been able to give birth till this day. Oh, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number two. An altar is a system designed to secure answers from a spirit. An altar is a system designed to secure answers from a spirit being. First Kings chapter 18, quickly, if you have your Bible. First Kings chapter 18. We'll begin to read from verse 22. First Kings chapter 18, beginning from verse 22. When you go for weddings, when you go for burials and all the things that bring family members together. There's one of the lectures we're going to do. I will show you things to look out for. Because most times we go there, we don't know where to look. If you see any of these signs, know that you're at war. 
Stop eating, stop drinking, start praying. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answers by fire. I let him be God. The moment we begin to talk about altars, it means that there are human beings that need answers. The way to secure answers is the way of the altar. The God that answers by fire. So altars are systems that are put in place to secure answers from spirit being. A God that answers by fire. Let him be God. A God that answers by fire. Now, people that worship evil spirits, I worship demons. They are not as foolish as we think. And the reason why I say so is because that thing they worship knows how to secure answers. The reason for their continuous devotion, their continuous patronage is the history of answers that that dimension of priesthood has secured. So when you come preaching the gospel to them, the way to preach to them is to create another channel of answers. You know, when Moses came to speak to Pharaoh, he said, let the dust hear the Lord God of the Hebrews. Let my people go that they may serve me. And Pharaoh said, who is the law that I might obey him? He was not asking a theological question that you bring a concordance and say the word God is an acronym which means greatest order of divinity. <laughs> oh, my God. That was not what <coughs> Pharaoh was requesting. He said, what are the answers <laughs> that your God can produce? Because Janice and Jambres here have their way with answers. The church, the end time, and I hope you know, in the end time, the Bible says that as Janice and Jambres we stood Moses. That's how the truth is going to be. We stood in the end time. The, the battle of the end time will be fought on the ground of, of the supernatural, the ground of answers. Oh, you want your family liberated? Let me tell you how it will happen. You bring your own, your own altar and you generate. A, there's no way that battle will end peacefully. Men will die in the process. Do you understand that? Oh. I know you like peace, but if we, have, if, we, if we introduce altars, it will not end in peace. It, it will be conquest. It will be by conquest, not by peace. If, if, if we want peace, it's in the court, the court of law. That's where they set for, <laughs> they settle in peace. But if this matter has gone to the level of altars, no, it will be solved by answers. He said, you guys take two bullocks. You can cut your sacrifice in pieces and put it upon the wood and put no fire on them. 
I will spread my sacrifice before the Lord. And the God. That what? How many of you need answers as you are sitting? You need answers. So we need an altar. If you need answers, we need an altar. The God that answers by fire. The God that answers by fire. I know you must have heard that in the village, people that know how to manipulate altars, people fear them. Why do they fear them? Answers. They can secure answers from the spirit that they are. Oh, you think that a man of God that knows Jesus huh, is any different? It's not different too. Sometimes you are even attacking him, he doesn't know. The angelic infrastructure that attends to his altar, there are some, oh my, evil things can happen just because of that. The God that answers my fire. So it's a system through which we can secure what? answers. An altar is a place of communion where natural entities can commune with supernatural entities. A place of communion. We can check this out in the book of Exodus chapter 33, beginning from verse 7. Exodus 33, beginning from verse 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of congregation. Now, I'd like you to see the vision he had in mind. And it came to pass that everyone, underline one, even though it is called the tabernacle of congregation, it is not a community, it's not a corporate fellowship system, it's a personal fellowship system. Everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, the tabernacle that belonged to the congregation, but it is a facility that is built for personal intercourse with the spirit realm. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Everyone which sought the Lord went out onto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. Yes, verse 8. And it came to pass when Moses went out onto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood up every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. It was the tabernacle of the congregation. All the children of Israel had right to this place, but it was only Moses that was going. That's how it is in the New Covenant. We have right to the presence. We have right to the dimensions of God's glory. But you don't come. I don't come. How can we advance in the things of God? Meanwhile, are you there? Okay. Verse 9. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudly pillar descended, and stood at the door of the tab tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. You will notice that that system can only accommodate one individual per time. The moment the individual enters into the vault, the fire, the pillar will come from above and block the door. Once you gain entrance, it comes from above, it blocks the door, nobody else can enter. Because the communion you have having is going to be specific to you. It's going to be idiosyncratic. It's going to be individualistic. 
This is what God has that the devil doesn't have. If the devil needs to deal with people, he deals with them as a group. The devil cannot deal with people in their specific context of destiny as individuals. He doesn't have the resources to manage that kind of administration. It means that there are encounters that only you will have in the presence of God. God can sponsor specific encounters that are unique to you. And if you don't have it, nobody else will have it. And just in case you have it, it is yours and yours alone. And that's why we believe God differently. We respond to God differently because we had different encounters. The moment he access, accesses this place, God comes and shuts the door himself. And then the Bible says, and the Lord talked with Moses. Yeah, next verse. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped and every man in his tent. So their own worshipping, they were doing it in, at the door of the tent. And they are worshipping the glory of God that Moses' personal relationship with God brought down. So when they see that glory, they say, hey, he is God, the Lord is God. The Lord. But it was Moses' personal relationship with God that was bringing that dimension down. Verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. This is the quality of relationship that was obtainable in that tabernacle. And I would like to really emphasize it as much as I can. The Lord spoke Unto Moses face to face. You see, when you read face to face, some of you will think you understand what it means. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. I said, yes, I know what it means. It's just... No, he went further to explain unto us what he meant by face to face. What is face to face? As a man speaketh unto his friend. The first thing we can draw from the, the qualifier that was used is that it was not a formal relationship. It was not the kind of relationship you will find in the, in the army. I remember when we went for youth service, Kano, Kano was 15 degrees, 15 degrees. And some nights, it will be 12 degrees in the night. The moment you put your back to, to rest, you hear, And the way, I don't know what instrument is that, but it doesn't matter how you slept, whether you in the dream, you are in the forest, you will hear. <laughs> You will hear that sound in the forest there. And when they give you additional five minutes and you are not up from your bed, ah. That's not how the relationship between Moses and God works. He spoke to him face to face. He spoke to him as a man speaking unto his friend. You know, this is the kind of relationship that Adam had with God. When he came in the garden in the cool of the day to meet with Adam. You might wonder, why is it that God always took time to come meet with Adam in the garden. Those moments were training moments, capacity building moments. It was like a school. The reason why Adam needed to be schooled was because Adam was created an adult. Adam did not grow like my daughter, Debbie. They didn't say, Dada, Mama, 
Papa. Adam just came and he was a man. Say, eh, how are they? <laughs> he did not have the opportunity to grow. He was created a man. You know the problem with that arrangement? Even though he had a big body, he was still a child. So he was a small man in a big body. I just pray that that's not how you are. So God came to him in the cool of the day to train him. Adam needed the education that God was coming to give him. It is on one of those trips that God told him the thing that Adam can do so that he will die. Can you see how important those moments are? When you look at the description of the kind of relationship that Moses had with God, the Bible says that God spoke to him face to face as a man will speak to his friend. It was an informal relationship. You see, my wife runs a nursery and primary school. If you have children, two years and under, three years and under, four years and under, and you want to get stuff into their head, the only way for you to succeed in your intention is that you must make that your education an occasion for play. It must be very, very informal. If not, you cannot communicate knowledge to the people of that category. What was happening to Adam was that he was in school. And the kind of school that Adam was in was actually primary school. So the teacher came one day for lecture and the student had absconded. <laughs> Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? It became a problem. The pupil had escaped from class. And the lecturer was going around looking for where the pupil was. That is your case. <laughs> <laughs> you <left> the, <laughs> the presence of God. This kind of relationship is a capacity building program. Oh. Sometimes God will even give you information about things that will take place 15 years before time so that you can begin to prepare your mind. You know, your you don't look like your destiny. You don't look like what God has called you to do. You don't look like it. You don't even have the grace to power it now. It will take a meticulous process. God will keep bombarding you with it until you can come to terms with it in your heart. It, it, what God wants you to accomplish, you are a stranger to it. So you need, you need times of communion, times of, he needs to speak to you, not formally, you will not learn. If he comes and says, I am Jehovah, ah, you won't learn, you will escape from that place. So he, he, he comes like, like, like a primary school teacher. And he speaks to you face to face. As a man, speak it unto his friend. If it is true that you are managing an altar, when you begin to talk about God, we'll know you, ha you have spent time in that school. The other day, those days when electronic Bibles were not uh, common, uh, the only Bibles we had were hardcover Bibles, they invited the prophet on the pulpit to come carry out a function and he wanted to open to Jeremiah. He did not succeed in the whole 45 minutes of his time on, <laughs> on the pulpit. He did not succeed in opening. So he was, when he tried and failed many times, he just took the mic and prophesied. <laughs> he, are you there? He has not been, he has not been here. The problem that this school has is that all the puppies have escaped. <laughs> you are making me laugh. 
I'm very serious now. Very, very serious. All the poopies, all the poopies. <laughs> I've escaped. They ran away. The, the lecturer is, look, where art thou? The presence of God is empty. He came for intercourse. He came for education. He brought, he brought his chalk, brought his blackboard. He's hanging it. But then he realizes they are not here. They are not here. They are not present. I was in 300 level in the university here. Because this is my culture. Before I study my books, my academic books, I study the Bible. I don't open anything until I've read the number of chapters I read every day. And while I was studying the Bible, one of those nights, I heard his voice. I thought it was a Bible study topic he wanted me to study. The voice said, a prophet like John the Baptist. Okay. So I now started studying about John the Baptist. I now realized that John the Baptist wore the spirit of Elijah. There were aeons apart but the address code was the same. It was the spirit that was upon Elijah that came upon this man called John the Baptist. And even though he never saw Elijah, he began to dress like Elijah. He began to eat. In fact, his menu was a product of inspiration. He ate locusts and wild honey. Are you there? The same way Elijah spoke truth to power, that was how John the Baptist spoke truth to power. John the Baptist, because of his witness, was placed in the dungeon. He was still speaking truth to power. There was a spirit that was upon him that bore such strong witness. His testimony and his witness un unsettled the government of the time. because he was a carrier of the spirit of Elijah. So I did that whole Bible study. That was a message I prepared for many years and I never preached it. I never knew that it was not a, a sermon to be preached. That it was the life that was going to live in the future. That God was going to put the spirit of Elijah upon my life. And those of you that have sat under my ministration for a long time, you will know when that spirit is at work. It changes. It begins to talk. And that talk, now the thing talks, it can shake tables and break it. That witness, that witness that comes, when that anointing comes, when that anointing comes, it has little tolerance for unrighteousness, unfaithfulness, for corruption. It speaks against it. It causes it. The reason why God had to tell me before time is that there is no kind of anointing that causes more trouble than that anointing. I mean, to the person that carries it. Because of the kind of witness that he bears. It is in one of those moments of communion that that understanding began to drop. What would have happened to me if I missed class that day? Something can eventually come upon you that you don't know how to manage. You don't know its purpose. You can now, go, you can now become guilty of merchandising 
a spiritual resource that God made available because you were not you were not available in class to be taught how to steward it to the glory of God. The Lord is crying. And you know what he's saying? My children need to come back to class. Our prayer point this in evening is simple. Lord, I come back to class. Now, are you here? You are an evangelist. You are supposed to be a youth evangelist, hopping from campus to campus, getting young upcoming people to see Jesus and to cause their hearts to bow in repentance to him because you have not attended classes. You do not know that that quiet calling that is upon your heart is a strategy that God has put in place to secure the future that is to come. The most minute things that your heart begins to contemplate are major dealings that reveal policy directions of heaven designed to forestall dangers of demonic infiltration. Can we labor in the presence of God in the next 15 minutes? I come back to class. I draw near. I draw near with a sincere heart, with full assurance of faith. Having my heart sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. So that I can pick frequencies coming from your heart. Eesh. Mora hasiko brema is kobolo horokasi komandeli. I come back. I come back. I come back to class. 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 Miraka Santoria. Amanto kobregede. There was a time.